lot of the videos we provide can be overly explanatory of how Automation Manager works and is structured. So in this video, we intend to peel all of that back and show the very minimum steps someone would need to take in order to get two axes to move with the pack. There are a few assumptions we're making with this video. One, we've already downloaded and installed Automation Manager. Two, that our PC is connected with an Ethernet cable to the PAX X2 port. Three, that we've already gone through and set an appropriate static IP address for our PC. And four, that all of our EtherCAT slave devices are connected as desired. First things first, open Parker Automation Manager. Select New Project, New Standard Project, and name your project. Select your pack type. Likely it'll be a PAC 320C, but you can double check by looking at the sticker on the side of your PAC unit. And let's start with continuous function chart as our default language since we'll be using PLC open function blocks. Jumping in, double click on the PAC device and either select scan to find your PAC on the network or connect by manually typing in the IP address. Once connected, go to ethercat underscore master, right click and select scan for devices. Import all of the devices from your EtherCAT network. Now I'm going to rename my drives X and Y. And since I know these P-series drives have a resolution of 524,288 counts per rotation, or pulses per rotation, I'm going to scale them so that my user units are in revs. I'm mapping two physical inputs from my PAC IO module, one that will trigger my X-axis to move and the other that will trigger my Y-axis. Now we can incorporate our mapped I.O. and drives into our program. I'm going to rename the default program to move XY, and since it is only going to contain motion commands, I'm going to move it to the ethercat underscore master task, where all motion commands should go. We don't need an additional task for this project, so I'm going to go ahead and delete the main task. Here I am doing some exponentially fast programming in continuous function chart. Note, I'm allowing a few things to happen here that is speeding up my programming significantly. I'm allowing Automation Manager to auto-declare all of my function blocks and my variables. Since I'm creating my inputs by clicking on the desired input of the function block and pressing Enter, Automation Manager already knows the appropriate data type that I'm trying to create. In addition, all of my Axis and PACIO are global variables, so I can use them directly in my program. So this program does two basic things. First, it powers my drives, and second, it triggers a relative move either in my X or Y axis when I toggle my Move X or Move Y inputs respectively. Both moves turn five user units, or five revolutions in my case, at a speed of five revolutions per second, at 100 revolutions per second squared, both acceleration and deceleration. And now let's download and run. There are a few variables I did not tie to physical inputs, but luckily Automation Manager allows us to force them by using the online mode of the variable declaration window. Simply click the bools to true in the prepared value column and write using control F7. Let's test our switches. All right, we have motion on both axes. And that has been a whirlwind tour of your first pack project. Some of what we've done might leave you asking, well, why is it done that way? If that's the case, check out our other videos in this channel to get more detail, drop by the pack product page, or join the discussions happening on the pack support forums, also linked in the description below.